Um, in the catalogue of plain curves, it says that the catacostic uh, for a parabola uh, with rays perpendicular to the axis is Chernhausen's cubic. Um, so I've got to model this, but then I'm going to look at what about if the rays are not perpendicular to the axis? What uh, is it my book doesn't um, tell me? I'll be doing the modeling with uh, GX Web and the free browser based version of geometry expressions and um, we'll, we'll use um, Wolfram Alpha for uh, uh, some CAS that we need in the process. Um, so GXWeb doesn't have uh, parabolas, uh, this is its geometry, but it does have functions so I'm going to um, just do a parabola function. And the function drawing in GXWeb uh, you sketch first and then it guesses what you're sketching. So if I do anything that looks even vaguely like a parabola, um, it gives me the general equation of a parabola. If I accept that, um, it gives me uh, uh, a parabola with those, with those parameters, uh, with some uh, parameters that we can then uh, um, tweak. Uh, but that's not what I want. I, I want this, the straightforward function um, y equals x squared, so I'll just I'll put that in directly. Uh, you can always countermand uh, Jake Webb's guess. I could put a, a hyperbolic cause if I wanted in anything I want. Um, let's just zoom in on that thing. Yeah, that's about where I want it. Um, so I'm going to be reflecting light, the catacostic is the envelope of um, a family of reflected rays. Catacostic distinguishes it from diacostic, which is refracted uh, rays. So to reflect in this curve, I need to put the tangent to the curve on. So let's do that to select the point of the curve. Um, tangent. Uh, constraint pops up, but it does more than just constraint, it actually creates the, the tangent in this case. Not only that, it creates um, a locate or a parametric location constraint for A for the point it's created on the curve. Um, that T is telling us how far along the curve uh, we are. Um, the drawer on the right here is my numeric panel. Uh, you can see as I as I pull T uh, changes up here, uh, I can type into my numeric panel coordinates of A, for example, uh, and that shows me that um, as I pull A, uh, you can see that T and the X coordinate um, of A are the same thing. So T here. Is just tell me what the x coordinate um, is on that function. Um, okay, well, we're going to talk about light coming in perpendicular to the axis, but just before we start, I'd like to uh, bring some light in parallel to the axis. So here's um, a ray of light coming in parallel with the axis. And we can constrain that to perpendicular. And now to reflect it, I choose the ray, and up here uh, there is a reflection uh, construction. Um, I now have to choose what I'm going to reflect in. Uh, so I've now reflected that ray uh, in the tangent to the curve. Now, of course, think about. Um, uh, a parabola is that it does reflect light parallel to the axis through the focus. Um, and what is the focus? It's the intersection of, uh, I've got an extra point selected here. I select a way to deselect and then select the two points, the two lines, and I have the intersection construction. And as we see, um, but B does not move. Uh, I can see it up here. As I move around. Um, 
I just press enter to uh, clear that out so that we don't um, pick up another parameter. Um, we see that that stays the same, or we can look at it in our symbolic panel down here, uh, coordinates of B. Uh, a quarter. Now, I'm going to want to get rid of this because I'm not really wanting to look at line, uh, lines parallel um, to the axis, one line square perpendicular to axis. So now selected things I want to get rid of, a long press uh, lets me delete. Or I could just press the delete on a keyboard if I have one. Um, so now I'm going to bring in a line um, perpendicular to the y-axis. And um, I would like that focus to be there just for reference. Remember, it was zero a quarter. So I'm going to create a point and specify its location to be zero a quarter. Now. If I let it snap to the axis there, it's not going to let me give its coordinates, so it's not free for me to specify the coordinates. So if I'm going to specify the coordinates of a point, I want to make sure it doesn't attach to everything first. Now I'm able to constrain the, co the coordinates here, um, and I'm going to give it a zero, a quarter. Um, so that sticks that at um, the focus. Um, this for reference, we're going to use the, the, that focus uh, several times, but we can hide the um, uh, the constraint there. Uh, I just like to keep the, my model here a little bit clean by hiding things away. So now I'm going to reflect the line perpendicular to the axis. Again, in the tangent to the curve. And now as t varies, now we can see this does um, something interesting. What we'd like to look at, the catacaustic is the envelope of this um, family of lines. Um, that is the curve to which the entire family is tangential. Now, we fortunately in GX Web have a command that gives us this. Uh, this is the locus or envelope um, construction. Uh, if I've selected a point, it will give me the locus of that point. If I select a line, it will give me the envelope of that line. Um, now, I have to say the envelope with respect to what, um, and in this case, we only have one parameter, the parameter t is what's going to vary. So I select that. And there we get um, our envelope curve. I'm going to do a couple of things just to clean up my diagram first. Um, let me select the original parabola and change its color. Again, a long press brings up the color menu. So <coughs> I've now got uh, my catacaustic in red. It's only giving me kind of half the catacaustic. Let me. Zoom out a bit, we can see um, where things stand. It gives, it's because it's used the limits of t, which were up there by default. Uh, t is varying from 0 to 1. Um, well, let me make it vary from minus 1 to 1. Um, that gives me. Um, the whole loop of the catacaustic, it, it goes on, but I think that's a, a reasonable amount of it to look at. Um, so, having done that, we can take a look as we move T along and we can see how the reflected line um, is tangential as we go to that curve. So what's the equation of the curve? Um, well, here we want to go into our um, symbolic panel. 
and we can ask for exclusion. Now, as my book told me, it was Schoenhausen's cubic. Uh, it's no surprise this is a cubic, um, and there is its equation. So, one question that, that occurs um, is, uh, where, where's this crossover point? Well, we could do that. We look at this. This is going to be for x is 0. If x is 0, clearly uh, y equals 0 is a solution. Uh, so this curve goes through the origin. Um, the other solution is a solution um, uh, to a quadratic uh, equation. And, and I'll let you do that uh, yourself while I'm doing it using um, Wolfram Alpha. Uh, it's a good opportunity for me to show you how to use Wolfram Alpha in uh, combination with uh, GX Web. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so to copy an expression into Wolfram Alpha, you see there's a copy button there has, has shown up when I uh, hover over the equation. Don't use it. Hover over it instead, and you see there's a copy text um, button shows up. That's what you want to do for copying into Wolfram Alpha, copy text. So we see up here, text copy to clipboard. And now we can paste that into Wolfram Alpha. Uh, so we've got um, an equation, a little bit ugly because we have print, unnecessary parentheses in there. Um, but let's just um, let Wolfram Alpha think about that. The, the cool thing about Wolfram Alpha is very frequently you don't actually have to tell it what you want to do because it, it, it just does a lot with an expression. So here it's graphing it and we see yeah, that, that that's kind of looks 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 reasonable. Notice it isn't an equation that GX Web is, is giving us as an equals zero. Um, it's kind of missing out um, uh, that equation. It's just giving us expression. Um, so we get a contour map of the expression there. But also look, we've got a variety of real roots uh, being presented to us. And there's one where x equals zero, um, y equals nine four. So that's about to be um, the uh, uh, loop, the where, where the loop closes uh, on the curve. That's the only other uh, crossing of the of the y-axis. Um, so let's go and look at that. Um, we're going to put a point, but I don't want to. I wanted to sort of snap to anything, so I'm going to put it off here. Uh, and I'm going to put 9 over 4, uh, 0, 9 over 4. And sure enough, uh, there it is sitting at, um, uh, at the double point. Well, let me hide this. Again, a long press gives me the uh, pop-up menu. Um, what I want to do now is think about, is look at what happens if the light is not perpendicular to either axis. Um, so it's coming in obliquely. However, I would like to keep this curve up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hide away these guys. Again, long press brings up my, my menu. Hide those things. and. Again, I'd like to change the color of this one um, so that we don't get confused as to what we're looking at. Um, OK, so that's my reference uh, um, cubic, Chernhausen cubic. Now let's bring in light at a different angle. Um, so here's a, here's a different angle. Let's uh, make the angle with the x-axis. Um, y by 4. We'll bring it in uh, halfway between vertical and uh, horizontal. And now again, we're going to have to we're going to reflect this um, in 
the tangent to the curve. So that's what it's doing. And we need to take um, the uh, envelope of the reflected line. Now that's quite surprising to me because it looks more or less exactly like the um, Chernhausen cubic. The except it's a bit smaller and it's uh, turned around a bit. Let's have a look at this equation. Okay, there's still a cubic. Um, there's a third power of y, and then there's some other stuff. Uh, let's see what Wolfram makes of this. Again, copy text. Let me get up there and the, Um, well, I was doing some analysis, but are we going to get, well, yeah, there's a picture of it that looks, uh, that looks like what we're looking at, the contour picture. Um, it's giving us the contour at zero. Uh, we've got some interesting looking real roots. Of course, there's all kinds of real roots. Um, this one looks the most interesting to me. I'm going to try putting that one in and see where it sits. Um, okay, that was uh, minus one and five over four. Uh, so let's draw uh, that. Again, stick a point away from everything and uh, constrain its location to minus one, uh, five over four. And sure enough, there it is sitting um, at uh, the double point on the curve. So a good guess on my part. Uh, I have to say, I did make that guess the first time, <laughs> not just because I'd seen it before. Um, okay. This begs the question, what's the general um, curve going to look like? And let's say, uh, Make this general. Now we'll make it phi. And now we can change change phi away from pi by two. Yeah, let's let's make phi go from And it's 90 to 90, it's a better range for it. Um, okay, but my question, um, the question that I have, which I did not answer, so let me go actually go back. Um, where I had the specific numbers there. Um, question I didn't answer was what value of t um, here on the uh, on the parabola contributes that position d to the curve. So in other words, which value of t uh, gives a reflected ray which goes through b? 
Now, my equation for K1 here um, is implicit uh, and doesn't involve T. So if I want an equation with T in it, I'm going to ask to ask for the parametric equations. Parametric equations of uh, K1. Um, and so there I see the equation with t in it. What I'd like is for the x coordinate to be minus 1. That will give me the, the value of t. So uh, again, let me uh, get Wolfram Alpha to do that. Uh, sorry, causing confusion here. Copy text is what we want. And we go back into Wolfram Alpha. Uh, so there's the text for that thing that's, remember, it's an x and a y coordinate. So let's just remove the y coordinate and turn that into equals minus 1. Again, let's just present that equation to Wolfram Alpha um, and let it decide what to do with it. Okay, so there's this input. That looks right. Um, it's going to be a graph of the thing, alternate forms, number line. Now here, it's giving me solutions. That's what I was actually going to want to ask it for. Um, there's one, and we've got a pair of symmetric ones. Those look um, uh, to be the ones we're liable to want because we've got uh, this double point. So we should have an answer on either side of the parabola. Um, so let's take uh, that root 3 um, upon 2. So now if I make if I make t sit on root 3 upon 2, uh, or not point eight six six. Uh, we can observe that um, this goes through point D, and if we make it go to minus not point eight but six six, uh, again we can see there's the reflected line, and it's going through. Uh, D. So, well, how about, how about C? Let's have a look at the parametric equations of K. Okay, not. Okay, we could have actually done that uh, problem more simple, simply here, uh, because C a uh, parametric equation you see there, we'd be wanting c at uh, the x coordinate of c to be zero, so we'd be looking for a solution to 3t over 2 minus 2t cubed equals zero, or t cubed equals uh, three quarters of t, or t squared equals three quarters, or t equals root 3 upon 2. So it looks from two samples here, it looks as if, uh, uh, or my hypothesis would be that the that t equals root 3 upon 2 um, is going to uh, give us the double point there. Okay, let's see if we can pull t around to the other side of the curve. Okay, let me now go back uh, to putting in my phi here. Uh, we've now got phi, and it's, again, it would like to be going from minus 1.57, uh, minus pi by 2, up to 1.57. Up to pi, so we can move it around. And we do see it appears to uh, be behaving um, in a very regular way. It looks like we're getting a scaled, um, rotated version of the original curve. That's just the eyeball. We haven't actually um, done anything to, to show that that's the case. And that's where we're going to go next. But first of all, 
Let's see if I, our hypothesis that um, root 3 upon 2 as the parametric value um, is uh, uh, puts us always at this double point. Um, the way to put a point at a specific parametric location on a curve uh, is this. There is a point. Now it's been given parametric location S, but what I'd like to do, let me just see what happens if I change that to T. Well, you'll see it now sits at the tangent point of um, this parametric location T. See, as I move around, T is now at that tangent point on um, the curve. Uh, so therefore, if I, instead of T, if I put that at square root of 3 upon 2, I'm misspelling my square root, SQRT, no, come on, uh, square root of 3, divided by 2. And that now appears um, at the at double point. Now I could go, I, I could use my um, get a symbolic panel to fully prove that this was the, the, the this was the uh, 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 this works, but we we'll use visual at the moment. Uh, however, I'm gonna, what I'm trying to do here is get that three over two selected so I can hide it. Um, there we go. So E is now ensconced at the, uh, sorry, and what I'd like to do is move five. Um, e is now located at um, the double point there. I'm going to hide off these lines because they're getting in my way. Um, we can look at um, the focus of E as five areas. So we've used this as an envelope um, constructor, but now we're going to use it as a locus constructor. We're not wanting T to vary, we're wanting phi to vary. Um, and there uh, we see phi is going from 0 to 1.58. And I thought I'd change that to minus 1.57. It didn't take. Um, here's the whole curve. Let me change the color of this one. Now that looks awful like a circle that goes through C and the um, focus. Um, and we can just check what it is by looking at its equation. Um, indeed, it's the equation of a circle. Um, I'll leave it to you to uh, work out where, where the center is, but uh, here's a hint. Uh, B is the point zero a quarter, and C is at the um, uh, point z zero nine over four, so zero two and a quarter. Now, Let's uh, let's remove this for this circle now. Uh, I'm not going to be too interested in this. If I'm going to put another um, YouTube up that um, looks at this. Um, looks at the fact that here, this point E is um, the point on the catacaustic due to a specific point, the one at, the one at t equals root 3.2 on uh, my parabola. How general is the fact that the locus of that, the locus of the point on um, the caustic uh, caused 
by incident light at different angles. This phi is the angle of the incident light. Um, there's a circle. It turns out in general it is a circle. And we will look at uh, what that circle is in a, in a subsequent YouTube. Um, but for the moment, I'm just going to hide that away because I'm uh, interested in it sort of looks to me as if the yellow curve here is just a rotated scaled um, version of um, the original uh, cubic. Not only that, it looks to me as I move it around that um, the focus is at the same relative position on the curve. Is this true? Um, well, let's put in a couple, let's get some information from uh, the situation here. We put in these couple of lines uh, temporarily. Um, let me find what's the angle CBE. Well, that's fine. Um, so that seems really straightforward. Um, what is the length of CB and CE? Um, no, by the way, CB is not the name of that line. The line is named BC. So the 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 the, the, the um the name of the line um has the um. It's an alphabetical order, so this line would be BE, not EB. Um, so length of BE at two cos five. So if this is indeed a rotation followed by a scaling, um, the scale factor is going to be two cos five, and the rotation is going to be five, and that will bring that will bring C onto E. Will it bring the rest of the curve in contact? Well, we will see. Um, let's do that. To ro rotate a curve, I pick it. I then come up to my rotation uh, constructor. And I have to pick a center of rotation, so I'm going to pick B. And I want that to be phi. So here's my new curve in red, uh, sitting on top of that one. Uh, it looks plausible. I now want to scale it. Uh, here's my uh, dilatation uh, transformation. Again, I have to put a center of the scaling, which is going to be B, and put in a quantity, which is going to be cos phi. And there, it's landed right on top. Um, now, we could look at the equations of both and uh, check out that they, they, they are the same, but uh, uh, I, eyes, in this case, are not deceiving me. Uh, we can look. We can look through the whole thing. OK, so I'm going to follow up this video. Um, so the the, her, the um, the answer to the question, what what about oblique light, is that it's also a Chernhausen cubic. It's just been scaled um, and rotated. And to me, uh, there's something curious about this, is this spiral symmetry that, that comes from um, a curve, the parabola, which doesn't have uh, a spiral symmetry. Um, and I'm going to have a couple of a couple of follow up uh, YouTube's to this one. Um, I'll look at uh, is it in fact general that the reflection um, that the reflections of the light coming in from different angles at a certain point on a curve forms a circle, and if so, what is that circle? And the second question is going to be, um, can I get to grips a bit with? Um, why geometrically we might be seeing this spiral symmetry. And I'm going to do that by modeling the parabola as um, 
uh, as a Bezier curve, uh, um, a quadratic Bezier curve, and modeling the Chernhausen cubic um, as a cubic uh, Bezier curve. But I'll finish this video at this point um, where we've um, shown the spiral symmetry.